Finally, having looked at the crew and the field, I thought there were two issues that I would address as an unknown 68-year-old person and that I would run for president and that I would come to New Hampshire to do it. My issues are corruption and jobs, and they are connected. You know why the tax code is unworkable and unreadable? It's because the special interest wrote it. Having been in Washington for eight years as a congressman, I saw what congressmen do now. They prepare for their real, their real work, lobby, influence peddling. I noticed this morning in the paper that Congress refused to act on the conflict of interest issue when members of the banking committee and other committees that got inside information and traded on Wall Street and made millions, oh, they just can't quite come up with a rule to prevent that. As was quoted in my editorial meeting here, let me say it again. I don't believe there's anything wrong with America that we can't fix. But it's going to take more than Republicans to do it. It's going to take independent-minded New Hampshireans. It's going to take independent-minded Louisianians. It's going to take Americans to reach across party lines and stand for core values. We can do it. We can balance the budget. It might take us five years, but we will do it. We can revise the tax code and do away with lobbying at the margin. We can create jobs with energy independence using all forms of energy, but made in America. We can revise manufacturing in this country with plentiful energy that's affordable and with fair trade across our borders. We can have government policy center on purchasing America where possible. I noticed the Defense Department today refused to reveal what percentage of our military defense procurement is American. I wonder why. We can do the things we need to do. But I think we have to start with corruption. They won't get done by the other candidates. Because you can't take the special interest money and stand up to them. It's possible, but I've never seen it happen. It's possible, but I've never seen it happen. You know who a man works for? Whoever signs his check. You know who politicians work for? whoever gives them money. That's the law of politics longer than my 68 years. And in Washington today, the lobbyists and PACs gave more money four years ago than 32 states combined. You hear me? You've got no chance. New Hampshire is unimportant. The citizens of New Hampshire don't count unless you got a check, then you can stand first in line. Is that the kind of America you want to see? Not me. It's not the kind of America that would do the things that must be done. Put all spending on the table, from Social Security to ethanol. And everybody gives something. Everybody. Balanced, what you can afford, what's essential, what are our priorities? It can be done, but it can't be done just by a few. We need to fight the corruption, not only because we'll be cleaner and stronger, but because you'll have a chance to be heard. You've got no chance now. None. Every other candidate in this race has a super PAC. You know what a super PAC is? 
That's an organization that can take unlimited contributions and not say who gave the money and get a candidate elected. Here's the law. They must be independent from the candidate. Let's see, Mitt Romney's super PACs are run by his business partner, his former chief of staff, and his former campaign manager. John Huntsman's super PAC is fully funded by his father. Now that's real independence. Rick Perry has seven super PACs. Seven. And every one is run by a cousin, a neighbor, a friend, or a former employee. It is a lie. It is illegal. It is a joke. Except no one's laughing. Because this is supposed to be our election. A guy wrote a book recently. It's called Republic Lost. I recommend it to you. It's by a guy named Lessig. When Benjamin Franklin walks down the steps from helping pass the Constitution in the Constitutional Convention, a lady meets him as he hits the last step and said, What have you wrought, Mr. Franklin? He said, A republic, my lady, if we are strong enough to keep it. Benjamin Franklin saw it coming. The threat to New Hampshire is in the checkbook of the special interest. You want a president free to leave, not beholden to Goldman Sachs or City Corp or GE. I'm telling you. It might not be me. Take somebody better than me. Take somebody with more experience or a better smile or 20 years younger. I'm willing. I'm looking for them. I hadn't found them yet. They're all backed up to the, to the depot, to the loading docks, loading up the cash. That's my number one issue, corruption. And because it's my number one, because every other issue is connected. You want to balance the budget? You got to get the earmarks out. They come from the people with the big checks. You want to revise the tax code and stimulate the economy? You're not going to do it. Fair tax, flat tax. I'm a flat tax guy. And we'll, I know you'll ask me about it. I'll answer it. But it's not going to happen. Because the special interest, like the code, like it is now. Why? Corporations have never made more money than they're making right now. Why would they change? Why would they change? Corruption, it touches everything. It is the key to unlocking our future. Get it? If we don't get the, if we don't get the checks out of the room, decent people will never be heard. My second issue and final point, and I love your questions, is unfair trade with China. I love for these guys running for president to talk about jobs. Most of them have never created a one. Some have and have a good record. I like that. But none of them talk about the issue in the 21st century. Unfair trade has killed us. You cannot find made in America. You can search for shoes, our shirts, our suits, all you want to. Somebody tries to tell me, well, you know, Americans don't make anything now. I said, now, why is that? Are we lazy? Do you know Americans work more than any nation on earth? Did you know that? Do you know we work about 20 hours a week more than Europeans do? That's a fact. Americans are innovative, entrepreneurial, brave, and hardworking. I reject the idea that we don't make anything in America because somehow we got lazy. Nonsense. Our tax code rewarded companies for leaving America. 
And the cheap countries like China, they're always going to be cheaper than us. They will. But they've added to that the little special flavor of corruption and unfair trade. Try to sell something in China. Oh, I know the free traders always come down on me. Oh, buddy, you've never been to China. I've been to China 20-something times. I've been in the back door plant after plant after plant. I've seen child labor that's against the law in New Hampshire. I've seen women work according to the woman, six days a week, 12 hours a day, and get paid room and board. That's it. And was told to come from our little town in Jinan to come to Chindu because they needed her in the plant. And she said she could see Chindu 40 miles before she got there. The smoke was so Look, my job is not to rebuild China, but I'll tell you my job as president is to tell the leaders of China we will trade. We are the largest market on earth. You hear me? People are always talking about how bad America, what, how bad shape we're in. Well, we're still the biggest market on earth. We're 25% of the earth's economy. 25%. And we're 7.5% of China's economy. That's how much they need us. They can't do it without us. Well, it's time for a talk. Face to face, at the top, not at the bottom. At the top, fair trade, fair trade, fair trade. American men and women need a chance to build. We'll change the tax code and quit giving our jobs away. We'll have fair trade with China. We'll develop affordable natural gas fuel so our small plants can be productive. We'll never meet the Chinese bottom dollar for bottom dollar, but we'll come close. And when you add transportation and quality and add pride to it, we'll make things in America. And people that talk about building jobs and don't talk about unfair trade with China, which is a big hole in our jobs budget, are lying or ignorant. Some, like John Huntsman, are apologetic for China. Shame on him. Shame on him. Now, I know he's got a couple of billion invested with his family in China, but that's not good enough. You're not running for president of the world. You're running for president of America. And we'll have fair trade. And we'll grow jobs. I'm running for president. I haven't made a single debate. I'm not sure why. I'm tempted to say it's because of this or that, but you know I'm not sure why. But I think the debate would be enhanced. Enhanced. And I'm not saying I'd carry the day, but I'd like to try. <laughs>